everyone, welcome back to In the Kitchen with Halifax Public Libraries. I'm Emily and today we're in the beautiful Sackville Library Kitchen making another delicious slow cooker recipe. So today we're actually making healthy sloppy joes, if you can believe that that's such a thing. So we're actually going to be making it in a pot today because I want to show you the final results. But you can just as easily follow this recipe, put everything in the slow, cook slow cooker and it will create the same delicious flavors. Um, we're also making it a healthy recipe because we're pairing it with some homemade coleslaw, which I'll demonstrate just a little bit later. But we really wanna get our Sloppy Joe's cooking, so I'm gonna start out, as you know, with our onion. So I already chopped up our onion because we've done enough onion demos for now, um, but I'm just going to take some cooking spray and coat the bottom of our pot first. So we'll be cooking our sloppy joes on about medium heat and I'm just going to go ahead and add my one onion into the pot and get it sauteing. And just like the other recipes, it's nice to get a little color on your onion because it really helps build the flavor of the recipe. We're using lean ground beef today so we don't have to drain the meat. But if you are using medium ground beef or one with a little bit more fat content, I would recommend browning your beef first before cooking your onions and vegetables so you can actually drain the excess fat off of your beef. But we don't have to worry about that too much today. So while these are cooking, I'm just going to show you what we're gonna be using for vegetables. So I've been talking about this for some time now, but to make your recipes a little bit quicker at home, but just as nutritious, um, we're going to be using some frozen vegetable mix. And this can be found at Superstore, it's no name, it's very affordable, and it actually has everything in there that you need to put into there to make it a really healthy recipe. So we're using two cups of our veggie mix, and we're also using TVP. So I know you've seen this before in our videos, but TVP just helps to extend your meat. It's extremely affordable, and it's made from vegetables. So actually it has zero fat, but it has tons of protein and fiber. So you can actually add this right into your beef and it will absorb all the extra moisture. It'll have the same texture as the beef and it will actually not have any weird tastes. It will just take on the flavor of whatever you're cooking with. So we're gonna add that in as well um, when we're done browning our beef along with the vegetables. And it'll just absorb all that moisture. Uh, we also are putting in some barbecue sauce into our Sloppy Joes. So you've probably seen Sloppy Joe recipe before where they call for maybe ketchup and mustard and vinegar and sugar. So I realized that all of those flavors are kind of in barbecue sauce um, along with a little bit of a zesty, smoky flavor. So I like to put barbecue sauce in my Sloppy Joes. We're also going to be adding a little can of uh, tomato paste because it gives it an um umami flavor. So umami is actually one of the flavors that aren't, isn't talked about as much. So there's salty, sweet, sour, savory, but umami is like that meaty flavor. So tomatoes actually have uh, that umami flavor we're looking for in our sloppy joe mixture. I'm going to give my onions a little stir here. So if you're making this recipe in a slow cooker and you mix all these things together, you'll notice it kind of looks like a giant meatloaf in your cooker and you might be a little bit nervous about why it doesn't look the same as it does here in the pot today. Um, but rest assured that once the meat cooks a little bit and the vegetables soften and release their moisture, um, it will start looking crumbly and kind of similar to the sloppy joe mixture that we're making in the pot. So just have patience, let it do its thing and cook all the way through and uh, it will turn out into that perfect mixture you're looking for. So I wanted to do Sloppy Joe's today because it's a little bit different than all the soups that we've been making in the slow cooker. And the reason that I'm wanting to show you how to cook meat in the slow cooker is because the slow cooker is a great tool for cooking meat. It's a great way to save money on tougher cuts of meat because when they stay cooking slowly in the pot for a long time, in the slow cooker, it actually gets so tender and so delicious that it tastes like a really expensive cut of meat. Um, so that's a great way to cook your meat, to braise your chicken. Um, if you're doing pork, you could do pulled pork. Um, as long as you're staying safe with your slow cooker um, meat cookery, then it's all really delicious, um, a way to cook meat. 
And uh, something else that you need to think about when you're cooking meat in your slow cooker is that you want to use a high setting. And the reason is because of food safety. So while our onions are cooking, we'll talk a little bit more about food safety uh, with using meat in your slow cooker. So for example, your slow cooker takes a while to heat up, so you wouldn't want to put a frozen roast in your slow cooker because it would take such a long time for your roast to heat up that it would be possibly give you food poisoning by the time that it's done. So using a high setting and making sure you're using um, defrosted meat is a big thing you want to make sure you're doing. Another thing to consider when you're using meat in any recipe is that you're keeping it separate from uh, the rest of the things you're chopping on your cutting board. So for example, we're making coleslaw that we're just going to eat right away without cooking. So you wouldn't want to do anything with meat on your cutting board or with your knife and then transfer it over to your coleslaw because that's called cross-contamination and that's another thing you need to watch out for um, with food safety. And the last thing you need to make sure of when you're cooking meat in your slow cooker is that you're bringing it up to the right temperature. So bacteria can't grow above a certain temperature. So if you have your slow cooker on high, you know that bacteria can't be growing on your food. And if you have your meat obviously in the fridge, that's such a low temperature that bacteria can't grow. So as long as you're keeping your meat at either a very high or a very low temperature, you don't really need to worry about uh, food poisoning. All right, so now that our onions are nice and golden brown, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our meat. And brown that up nicely. And then we'll be adding our frozen vegetables and our TVP. So our vegetables are still a little bit of frozen, so they have a lot of moisture. So when we add in our TVP, they'll really, you know, soak up that delicious flavor and the juices from the vegetables. So I'm gonna break up my meat a little bit here. Our ground beef looks nice and brown now. We can really smell it in the kitchen. It smells great. So I'm going to go ahead and add our fro frozen vegetables in and those can start steaming. And I'm also going to add in our textured vegetable protein or our TVP. So we're doing two cups of frozen vegetables, half a cup of TVP into our two pounds of ground beef. And of course we have our onion in there. So just give that a nice stir around. So our vegetable mixture has celery, carrots, peppers, and onion. I like to do extra onion because it gives it even more flavor. So right now it kind of looks like a shepherd's pie filling if you've ever made that at home. And if you want to do a little bit for your sloppy joes and save a little bit for a shepherd's pie, you could always add some peas in there. And then you could just top it with some mashed potatoes and a baking dish and toss it right into an oven. So you can have kind of a two-in-one meal, half sloppy joes and half shepherd's pie. So this looks really great. I'm going to add our flavor makers. I'm going to do just a little bit of salt here, just a crack. I'm going to add just a dash of pepper. So this is to taste. You can add a little bit more once it's done. And I'm adding one tablespoon of garlic powder. You can also use fresh garlic. I'm just choosing to use uh, powder today. But one tip I do have for you is that you should always use garlic powder instead of garlic salt because you want to have control on how much salt you're putting into your dish. So just make sure you're reading the package carefully at the store. And I have this on medium heat. So I'm going to go ahead and add in one small can of tomato paste to add our umami flavor into our sloppy joe mix. And that just helps create like a nice sauce that our meat will simmer in. Put that aside. And also, of course, our smoky, zesty, regular barbecue sauce. Just the cheapest kind you can find at the grocery store is completely fine. And I'm adding a quarter cup of barbecue sauce. So I'm just going to put this away, stir it all together, and let it simmer for about 30 minutes. And once that's done, we'll be ready to serve it on a whole wheat bun or even a roll, if that's what you have available. And we're also going to be making and chopping up a nice coleslaw to either put on top of your sloppy joe or to eat it on the side.
Our sloppy joe mixture is looking amazing. So I'll tilt this up a little bit. Hopefully you can see it. All the meat is nicely browned and the flavors have come together and it's kind of almost sticky. It's not runny and it doesn't look too juicy. It looks like it has a nice sauce all around the meat. And something I did while it was cooking is add just a little bit of stock or you could add water because I noticed that it was sticking a little bit on the bottom. So remember what I said about fond. Anything that sticks to the bottom is going to have an extra boost of flavor and you want to really scrape that off to introduce that into your dish. So our filling is complete and all we have to do now is make our homemade coleslaw. You can so easily buy store made coleslaw but I find it really fun and satisfying to make it at home. I'm making it with two different kinds of cabbage. So I just have regular green cabbage and a beautiful red cabbage as well. So there's gonna to be tons of color in our coleslaw. And the reason I love to put lots of color into my dishes is because every color of a vegetable represents a different compound that's called an antioxidant. So antioxidants actually reverse any damage that happens to your body, like to your heart, or to your brain or anything like that, it reduces that damage and it actually is very, very healthy for your body. So the more color you put in your diet, um, the healthier it's going to be. So for the green cabbage, I already split it into quarters and removed the core, but I'm gonna show you how you can do that as well. So you just take your sharp knife and lay your cabbage down on the flat side. If there's any kind of ugly pieces on the outside, you can just peel those away and I've already washed my cabbage, so I know it's nice and clean. And any kind of gray brown bits you can just take off there. So you just wanna make sure that you're cutting your cabbage with your claw shape and from the root to the top. And then to remove that root, all you need to do is really cut on an angle. So you'll see that root there it kind of juts up into the center of the cabbage. So just very carefully on an angle, you can cut down and remove that part. And it's just a little bit tougher to chew and a little bit woody and dry, so that's why we're removing that. And the next step is pretty easy. You just slice it as thin as you can to make a beautiful coleslaw. Um, we're grating our carrots, so we want all the veggies to have a nice small uh, shape and texture so that there's a lot of variety and flavor and um, color as we're eating our coleslaw. Just gonna take a little bit more off the top and just do, this is called a julienne in uh, French. It just means a very thin matchstick shaped slice. Beautiful. See how easy that was? It only took a few seconds. So I'm gonna put this in our coleslaw bowl and then we're gonna slice up our green cabbage. All right, so same thing with our green cabbage. Just set it down on your cutting board and start from the edge and get some nice thin slices. The more thinly you slice your cabbage, the more that the sauce or the dressing will be able to soak into the vegetable and it will taste even better that way. So try to get it as thin as you possibly can. So this recipe calls for a quarter of each type of cabbage, but if you just wanted to buy one cabbage, you would use half and that would be completely fine. It just wouldn't be as colorful. And uh, also I wanted to give you a little tip that at the grocery store, if anything is priced by weight, so for example, $5 per kilogram, you can request for the produce section to uh, just cut you off as much as you want. So for example, if you just want half a squash or half a cabbage, they actually can do that for you. So make sure to ask about that in the store because that can save you a lot of money if uh, you don't want to waste a whole cabbage just to make a little bit of coleslaw. And the last veggie we're adding into our coleslaw is carrots. So I already uh, grated a, a couple carrots in here. You want three large carrots for this recipe. So I'm just gonna toss that right in with our cabbage. And I'll just grate this last carrot. So I always recommend to start grating a carrot from the skinny pointy side, because by the time you get to the end, it's easier to hold on to a bigger nub essentially than a teeny tiny little tip. And I always like to pop the last little bit into my mouth if I get nervous that I'm gonna start slicing my fingers. And if you get to a point where it seems a little bit too steep, you can switch to the other side and start grating the other way. All right, so I've gotten this little nub left over. I don't feel like grating it because it's getting kind of close to my fingertips, so I'm just gonna eat it. All right, and the last ingredient, it's not a vegetable per se, but we're putting parsley in. 
This is gonna add extra color, extra texture, extra flavor. So we love parsley in most of our recipes that we make. Uh, don't worry too much about the stems. You don't need to pick the leaves off the stems because the stems taste just as delicious as the leaves and uh, they have just as great of a color and there's really no reason to throw them away. So I'm using about two tablespoons of chopped parsley. Just run your knife through. Don't worry if you make a bit of a mess along the way. We've got our parsley all set up. And we're just gonna toss that in with our coleslaw mixture as well. So for our coleslaw dressing, we're actually going to be using a store-bought one, um, just because I wanted to show you how convenient it is. Uh, this costs under $2.00. It's delicious, it's healthy, um, and you're only using a bit in your salad so you don't have to worry too much about calories with this. Um, and the only reason it might be more convenient than making your own at home is because you don't need to buy extra ingredients. So a homemade coleslaw dressing probably would include like uh, apple cider vinegar, maybe a Dijon mustard, some mayonnaise. So you'd need to buy a lot more ingredients to make pretty much the same product. So I'm just gonna bring my coleslaw over onto my cutting board and toss it with some tongs and then we'll add in our dressing. So you can see the beautiful colors that are coming together in our coleslaw. And you might think that we need more dressing than one cup because it's so many veggies, but you'd be surprised how far um, salad dressing will go. So we're gonna start out with just the one cup and I'll show you just how well it coats all of those vegetables and makes this wonderful coleslaw. And a tip that I have is that the longer you let this sit in the fridge, up to like three days, the more flavor it's going to develop because those that dressing really gets penetrated into the veggies. So I'm just gonna mix this all together. And it's really just that simple. Homemade coleslaw. And like I said, you can either top your sloppy joes with this pretty mixture or you can eat it on the side, whatever you prefer. But if you do put it on top of your sloppy joes, it adds a bit of a crunchy texture to your soft meat. And I really enjoy that myself. So I recommend you at least try that. And as you can see, it's nice and shiny because all of that dressing is distributed beautifully throughout the veggies. And this is gonna last you all week. You can kind of pair it with anything you're, that you're eating. So this is a good investment to make early on in the week and you can kind of munch away on it throughout the week. So I'm gonna put this aside. We're gonna put everything together and I'll be right back. So here they are, our delicious sloppy joes with some healthy and delicious homemade coleslaw. And as you can tell, we have all those rainbow colors. The meat is kind of spewing over the edge of the bun, which is exactly what you want with slop sloppy joes. So don't worry if it looks a little bit messy. So give it a taste. I hope yours turned out as well as ours look anyway. Thank you so much for joining us for In the Kitchen with Halifax Public Libraries. Mm -hmm.